um, we all kind of, it's amazing, we keep getting these questions around frustration with agents. And you think, you know, in a great market like Austin, it would be different than the rest of the country. But it's it's not. It's just this is a constant problem. And I'll, I'll read the question, give you my take on it, because I think there's an easy answer here. And it, it's not so much that it's a good agent or a bad agent issue, as I read this question. It's, I think it'll be pretty clear as to what the issue is. And the question, you know, and Juan and Valerie said, well, we're getting frustrated with our agent. He doesn't call us back very quickly and seems pretty disconnected with the new listings that are coming on the market that we may be interested or might be interested in. The only time he seems available is in the evening or weekends. Should we consider changing agents? If we're worried about missing out on the right home with such a limited supply of houses to choose from. Oh. Well, this is the age-old problem with realtors and real estate agents who work other jobs. My, I, I think when they dug into this, they're going to find that their agent may be very well intended to help them, may be a great person. But in a market like Austin, I do not believe, and I'll just make this as clear as possible, that if you intend to buy your first choice home and you're working with an agent who works a full-time job that's outside of real estate, you're putting yourself in harm's way. No question asked. You can't get somebody who's only available in the evening and occasionally on weekends and you got to wait to hear from them outside of their work hours and hope that you're going to be able to buy your first choice property. What do you think, Perry? Well, well unfortunately, you are describing a, a, a character that does exist in our business. There are people who have other jobs, and um, they want to make it in the real estate business, but for whatever reason, they're unable to do so or just choose not to do that. You know, this is more of a hobby for them. I think it's vital in a market like this to select an agent, the right agent, that fits your schedule you know, and has unique insights to the neighborhood that you're interested in. Um, you know, and they vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. We've talked about that over and over again. You've got to know and you've got to be active and you've got to be on it. Now, that said, I do think that some agents you know, can carry on this, and I think that they do act professionally and responsibly, uh, but I think that there are levels, and you can have the best of the best, or you can have someone who's really good, its heart's not into it. It's really up to you how to handle it. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the, the big question is, I always ask people this, is, that, is your number one priority keeping, you know, because nobody likes to have to have that difficult conversation and change agents. And they need to think long and hard at it because their their priority as the buyer and as for Juan and Valerie need to be put first. And sometimes that means that you have to ask yourself the tough question. Am I more concerned about hurting somebody's feelings or this major asset that I'm going to purchase? Is that more important that I have somebody who's going to be looking out for my best interest? And I think the practical reality is as great as that agent may be, they're just not the right fit in today's market. I mean, if they're looking in southwest Austin, I can tell you in a market that I do a lot of work in, yeah. right, right, that household have been shown and have offers by the time they hear back from that agent if he's not typically calling back till later in the evening on a given day. And if he's not in the MLS and actually out previewing properties for them, they're not likely to get to purchase their first choice home. And so it just becomes a tough question. They're gonna, it's a decision for them. Now, do they make a change or not? They have to decide what's more important, upsetting the agent or buying the right house. Because I don't think you can accomplish both. It would be very difficult to make the argument that somebody who's working part-time in real estate can represent their best interest. But that's ultimately for them to decide. Yeah. Well, sorry that you're going through that, uh, but, uh, you know, they're, I wonder what area that they're looking at, just out of curiosity. They never tell us the areas they're looking at, do they? <laughs> not always, not always. But I, I would certainly tell people, if you have additional questions, you can send questions to Perry and I at info at Austin, Texas Real Estate Today .com. Um, You know, think carefully, and I'll close with this. Think carefully before you enter into an agreement with an agent. Go listen to our special episode where we talk for about 10 or 15 minutes about what kind of questions you should ask agents. You will learn whether or not they work full time. You'll learn whether or not they're able to support you in the manner that you want by asking the right questions. So with that, um, Perry, I think we're at 
a wrap on episode 18. Uh, once again, happy Veterans Day. To, uh, thank you to all veterans currently serving. And thank you. For <laughs>